Thank you for joining us for a message from Vision Church. We hope that you can experience God in a real and powerful way today. Our teaching team has crafted a message that will be able to impact you no matter what stage of life you're in. So grab your Bible and something to write with and let's dive into God's Word together. Amen. Well, Vision Church, how are we doing this morning? Good. You guys may be seated. Kids, you are dismissed to Viz Kids. Um, well, church, I'm loving this Purpose Driven Life series that we're going through. Um, I just want to share a quick story with you guys real quick. So today we're going to be talking about when God feels distance. And I'm not sure if that can relate to anyone in their lives, but I'm going to share a story with you today from my experience. I'm going to invite one of my good friends, my sister in Christ, to come share some of her experience. And hopefully today we can just grow as men and women of God. But I want to start my story back in about 2018. I said, God, things are going pretty good. I was dating this girl. I was finishing up high school. I thought I was going to go to UNC Charlotte. It was wonderful. And then God just laid on my heart. God said, Emmaus, that's not the relationship that I want you in. I said, what do you mean, God? This is like the first one. I thought the first time you dated someone, you're instantly going to marry them, right? Some of you guys laughing either are like, you did marry the first person, or you're like, oh, wait, what's he talking about? But God laid on my heart and said, uh, you need to cut the off, man. It's not, a, it's not a godly relationship. And I said, okay, God, well, I'm going I'm to have faith. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to do this. And, hey, watch this. I bet I'm going to go home, and, like, the next week I'm going to meet, like, the woman I'm supposed to marry. And this can be just wonderful. And see, Okay, all right, God, I see what you're doing. I can tell what you're doing. So I broke up with this girl, and I was like, okay, I don't really have many friends. And, God, I'm trusting you because I don't even understand the full picture and I went home. I said, okay, God, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Have you guys ever been in that period of waiting? You're waiting for God to do something. You're waiting. All right, God, it must be next week. It's going to be this church a Sunday. And it was a span of about three or four years. Throughout that time, I said, all right, God, actually, I think I know what you're doing instead. I think you want me to have some more availability in my schedule to work on my business. I'm going to be one of those millionaires by 21. It's going to be great, like you see on TikTok and Instagram. And that, that summer after that breakup, business was so slow. This guy asked me to do a job for $150, and I almost like jumped out of my seat. I was so excited because that's how slow business was. And again, I thought, I said, God, since I'm following you, I'm pursuing what you've called me to do, I would imagine that you would have turned it around and said, yeah, miss, okay, here's the woman you're supposed to marry. Here's all the clients. Here's all the things you're supposed to be doing. I said, God, but it feels like you're distant. Has anyone here ever took a step of faith and said, okay, God, I've, I just believe that, I believe that you have more in store. When you take that step, you're like, okay, hey, God, it doesn't feel like you're here with me right now. Has anyone been in that position before? Yes. I remember back then, um, vision wasn't growing, uh, especially back in 2020. I said, okay, God, well, our church is following you. Our leadership is following you. Our members are on fire for the Lord. But God, so since we're following you, our church should have 500 people, 1,000 people, 10,000 people. And we, t- we did what God called us to do and said, we were one of the first churches to open back during COVID. Whenever everyone else was stuck behind a webcam, we said, we're going to come in here and lay hands. And, when, and then we, we stayed true to what God told us to do. We're, okay, God, did you leave us? There were times when I've asked myself this, some people here may have asked themselves this, but God, is it even worth living anymore? Is there even a purpose that you have for my life? Is there more than just waking up and clocking in, clocking out, and getting a direct deposit every two weeks where the government takes a third of it? Is there more to life than that? And if so, do I even want to be here anymore? If you sit in a spot where you say, God, I just feel so lonely. I feel like I have did what you called me to do, And it feels like you've either let me down or it feels like you've just left me. So I've been in that spot a couple years ago. And I can proudly say I'm not in that spot now because God has been doing some miracles in my life. And I'm excited to share that with you today, not by my power or not by my strength, but by the power of the Lord. But first of all, I want to start off and encourage you that if you are in that spot right now, God has not left you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. God is for you, not against you. And just because you don't feel God, it doesn't mean that the presence of God is not right there. Just like I mentioned a couple weeks ago whenever I preach, whenever you feel pain, that does not mean the absence of the presence of God. 
but that means that you have another reason to cling to the Father so that he can link arms with you, his yoke is easy and his burden is light, and you can have someone to walk through this journey of life together. Romans 15, 13 says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So before I even tell you my bottom line for today, before I interview my sister in Christ, I just want to tell you today, if you have confidence in Jesus Christ, you will have overflowing hope. You may not feel it today, you may not see it today, but that seed you're sowing today will reap a harvest of righteousness and you could have confident hope in Jesus Christ. So before I start, I just want to pray over this church family, over everyone watching online, uh, all over the world where people are watching from, and especially for those people who are feeling like God is distant. Because I guarantee you, if you're a believer and you haven't experienced it yet, you will at some point. And I want to unpackage this today with not as much hype and excitement, but actually more facts and experiences, because I don't want you guys just to be inspired for a moment, but I want you to actually have information that can challenge and grow you in your walk with Christ. So if this is for you today, I specifically want you to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, open up my heart. I'm going to pray for us. So dear Lord, God, I thank you for this house. I thank you for Vision Church. I thank you that the worship team has just sowed the seeds this morning of God, just your Holy Spirit being manifested in this place. God, I thank you for what you did on the cross 2,000 years ago. And God, I thank you for the victory that you have. And because of that one single act, God, we have hope. When the veil was torn from top to bottom, God, it says that, that we no longer have to go through a priest and to the most holy of places, God, but then we can go directly to the Father. And God, right now, I pray and believe that you are going to do miracles in this place I pray, God, that you would speak through me with such clarity, boldness, and accuracy of your word, God, to penetrate any hearts, any walls that have set up with pride, deceit, depression, anxiety, suicide, God, and that you would just break through any barriers that people have today, God, and we want to leave this place changed and ultimately feel your presence and know you more. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Lewis, you're dismissed. First of all, can we just give it up for that worship team? They have been on it today. I love it. I love it. So if you have a takeaway card, go ahead and pull it out. God has been downloading some information uh, to me this week through his word, through the book, The Purpose Driven Life by Dr. Rick Warren. And if you don't have a takeaway card, go ahead and raise your hand. Our host teams will bring one to you uh, because I guarantee you, you want to write some of this stuff down this week because my book, I had to make sure I grabbed actually my book this morning because I knew I keep writing in it. I'm not sure if we're allowed to or not, but I have a pen and I write. Anytime God downloads information, I'm like, ooh, I need to write that down because God has been speaking in so many great ways through this book. Our small groups have been on fire this week. So we're gonna be using God's word, the purpose-driven life, and words the Holy Spirit gave me this week. So the bottom line, when God feels distant, I can stand firm on his promises. Now, why is this important? Because God's promises are not based on our emotions. Some people are more emotional than others. Like I mentioned last time I preached, some guys will accidentally break their foot and be like, eh, it's just been an okay day. And some girls will spill a bowl of Cheetos and they'll like cry and their makeup will run down their face. So some people are more emotional than others. But ultimately, we have emotions as humans and we will feel emotional. Good emotions and bad emotions at times but we want to stand firm on his promises because God does not change and our emotions do not affect who he is. And whenever I was reading and digging into God's word this week, came to a realization that in my relationship with God, I won't always feel close to him. Because as I read through men and women of God who are truly pursuing the Lord, there were times that they didn't feel close to God. Now, I want to make sure I clarify, it does not mean that God has left them or God has forsaken them or that they have done something to disrupt their relationship with God, but they may not always feel God. And I know that that sounds weird because, yes, the Holy Spirit's always inside of us. God's never left us. But at least for me, I know there have been times I may have been praying through certain situations. I'm like, God, I just don't really feel you right now. I'm not really sure if I should sign this contract. I'm not really sure if I should go out to lunch with this friend. I'm not really sure if I should start this business. And whenever you don't feel God, we have to remember that his promises stay true. 
Um, so a couple, it was about a year ago, um, Pastor Bill Johnson, uh, he's the pastor of Bethel Church. His wife passed away. She had cancer. And uh, I was amazed that she, I think she passed away on a Wednesday or a Thursday, and he still preached that Sunday. I was very impressed by that. Whenever I saw his Instagram post, I read the caption, and I just had to reread it a couple times. Um, I'm going to summarize it. That earth offers the only opportunity to praise God in a storm. So even though I'm not going to go praying and saying, God, please give me some challenges this week. Please, I want this week to be really difficult so I can have some storms. Obviously not. That'd be stupid to do that. I mean, you can if you want, but I'm not going to do that. But when storms of life come my way, it's hard. I'm going to say, God, I may not understand why, but this is the only side of heaven where I will get to worship you in spite of a struggle. Because we're in heaven one day. We won't have the opportunity to worship God while we're struggling. Why? Fill in the blank. Because there's no pain, there's no sorrow in heaven. So I want to encourage you today, even if you don't know why, if you have no idea what's going on, at least you can start from the point of this is the only time in eternity that I will get to worship God through a difficulty. Also, the deepest level of worship is praising God in spite of pain. Or a lack of intimacy with God. I know for me, if I get a promotion, if I get a, a, a new client, whenever I started dating Hannah and eventually she said yes to me, asking her to marry me, and we got married, oh, I guarantee you, it was easy to lift up my hands and say, hallelujah, every praise is to our God, hallelujah, every word of worship I got, girl, I'm my league, it's one accord. And I was like, that's, that's so easy to praise God in those moments where, ooh, I just got that promotion, that extra 50 cents per hour, that just changed me. That's an extra McDonald's meal right there. Um, oh, come on, you guys know that. There have been times where you just get a little boost, and you're like, oh, yeah, God, I love you, I love you. And then you're, you get a little scrape on your car, or for some of your girls, you'll like break a nail or something. You're like, God just left me out when it was going on. I can't even praise God. Life's so hard. And it's easy to praise God in the good times. Ladies, was I being too dramatic about breaking a nail, or is that accurate? That's pretty accurate. Yes and no, yes and no. Okay, well, I've, I've seen some both before. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But before I want to share four ways to come closer to God, I want to at least try my best to unpack the question, why does God seem far away at times? Because at least for my basic understanding, I would think, well, if God loves us, he always wants to feel close to me. Does that make sense? That's at least what I would think. Well, if he sent his son to die for us, why would God not always want to be right beside us? And um, I'm going to be honest, there's not really a, a solid answer in Scripture for this. <laughs> but I did some praying this week to try to make some educated guesses. Uh, that's one of those questions that I'm going to ask God when I get to heaven one day, is in those moments, how come I sometimes don't feel you? And when I hear what God says, I'll let you know. So um, a few things that I point out is that God is always with you, but you may not always feel him. But, and also Deuteronomy says that God will never leave us or forsake us. That's as much information as I could find on this subject. Again, it does answer the question of why don't I always feel God, but it's at least a promise that he will never leave us or forsake us. And that's good news, because I'm not sure if you've ever woken up from a nightmare at 3 a.m. in the morning. I'm not sure if you've ever said something that you instantly regret, and then you feel like you can't talk to anyone. I'm not sure if you've ever swiped your card and said, man, I just put my family back five years financially. I'm not sure what mistake you've made, and if everyone leaves you, God's promises say that he will never leave you or forsake you. You may not feel him, but he's there. So I'm going to share four ways to come closer to God. One, to purge sin in the camp. And by camp, I mean your life. And this is one that's really uncomfortable at times, because for me, I'm like, honestly, I don't like people calling out things I'm doing wrong. Do you guys enjoy that? No, I mean, I, I like pats on the back, I like people telling me my outfit looks good, but I don't like when someone tells me that I can't wear black and blue together because it's called blavy. You see what I'm saying? Like, I like compliments, but I don't like critiques. I have a feeling that's not just me. But that's where we have to fight our, honestly, our sinful nature and say, God, I want you to search and know me and know if there's any impure ways in my heart. And there's some things that, that you don't have to pray about. What do you mean? You don't have to pray and ask God if it's okay to live with your boyfriends. You don't have to pray and ask God, is it okay to murder someone? Because it's in Scripture. If it's in Scripture, you don't have to pray about it because God's already spoken. So what I'm trying to say, you don't have to pray what God's already said. 
And sometimes whenever you're trying to identify areas in your life where you may not feel God, you need to step back and say, wait, is there any sin in my life that is causing a temporary disconnect to the Father? Because sin can disconnect us from intimate fellowship with God. Now, I do want to say that you cannot lose your salvation. If you are saved and you end up making a mistake, you end up sinning, it doesn't mean you're going to hell. Because John says that God can never snatch us from his hands. In the the Gospel of John, Jesus speaking. So that means once we're in Jesus' hands, we'll never lose our salvation, but it can temporarily interrupt our intimate fellowship with God. Now this next point, it may challenge some of your theology, because it challenged mine this week. But you can't hurt God, but you can grieve God. I want you to think about that for a second. Us as humans have the potential to grieve the Father. And I always thought, what? I mean, that's just not true because God made the heavens and the earth. He made me. How can I grieve God? Well, Genesis 6, 6 tells us with the story of Noah building the ark that human wickedness broke his heart. And God actually spent time debating whether he should just wipe out the entire earth, everyone, because the sin was grieving his heart. And as you could tell by how much it grieved the father because of what he was thinking about doing. That's how much it messed with him. God said, oh, they're sinning. Let's just sweep it underneath the rug back there. That's fine. He said, no, I can't stand it. He can't stand to be around sin. He can't stand it. So you see about either wiping out the earth, but I praise God that he didn't, and that because of Jesus Christ, now we can get to the Father and our sins can be made clean. But if you have sin in your life, you're grieving God. God doesn't hate you. He still sent his son to die for you, but you're grieving him And that could be one of the main reasons that you're not having an intimate fellowship with God. In Joshua chapter 6, the Israelites were in close communion with God when the walls of Jericho came down. Have you guys heard that story where they march around the walls, they shout, it all comes down, it's amazing. And obviously God is on their side because they cannot do that in their own strength. No matter how loud their band was playing, and they're probably even louder than us this morning, and their band cannot have enough power to have those walls come down. But God was on their side but then they lost the next battle at AI. And it's actually spelled AI. Isn't that so cool? It's not artificial intelligence, but it's the battle at AI. And they lost because of a man named Achan. Whenever the walls came down at Jericho, there was a bunch of treasures inside. There were some LV purses. There were some St. Laurent. There were some Gucci inside. And God said, don't you touch none of that stuff. That's not for you. There weren't actually purses in there. You have to, you have to use some context clues here. That wasn't around back then. But God said, that is not for you. A man named Aiken said, ooh, that little handbag does look pretty nice. Let me just take that with me. Or whatever it was. Gold, money, a necklace. Let me just take that with me. They went to go fight their next battle, and they got their tails whooped. And it wasn't because God hates them. It wasn't because God didn't feel like being on their side. It's because sin. God said, hey, I was with you there. What happens? At that point, Achan, they had to get rid of the sin, and they continued winning their battles. So why is this important? Because if you're not feeling God, the first thing I challenge you to do is step back and say, God, what battles am I losing because of sin in my life? And that's a tough question to ask. And I bet you there's some people in here who are like, I ain't asking that. I'll still love you, I'll still pray for you, but if you want to grow deeper in your walk with Christ, you have to be intentional to set time aside and say, God, will you show me what sin is going on in my life? It can be something as small as God's not pleased with the way you treat waitresses whenever you're hungry. Or it could be big as something as as you're planning on killing someone. Any type of sin can cause a temporary disconnect from the Father. Next up, point number two is to tell God how you feel. I want to I share something with you. Do you know that your prayer request and your fears are not intimidating to the Father? Whenever you share a prayer request to God, say, God, I'm scared of this presentation at work. God doesn't say, oh, my goodness, I am too. Whatever you share is not intimidating to God. He is big enough to accept anything you bring to his feet. And that's good news because sometimes there are difficulties or questions or things in my life where I don't want to tell someone else because I'm afraid that it may bog them down. I don't want to be a burden. Does anyone else feel that as well? 
And I know that no matter what, I can at least come to God and say, God, this is how I feel. He doesn't owe you a response, but he will at least listen to how you feel. There's a man named Job in the Bible. He was rich. He had over $50 million worth of sheep, camel, oxen, and donkeys. I'm just going to pause. I was trying to picture, if I had $50 million, how many donkeys could I buy with that? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not sure if I'm thinking at it too, like, literal. But when that said, uh, again, sheep, camels, oxen, and donkeys, like, for $50 million, I mean, if you had a million dollars, just imagine how many sheep you could have. I don't know how much those cost, but that's a ton of animals. I'm not sure. I could have just thought that. Forgive me if that was too weird. But Job lost his animals. He lost his property. His children were killed when their brother's home collapsed on him. So he lost his kids and he lost the property. The homeowner's insurance probably didn't cover it. Job lost everything. In Job 7.11, he says, I cannot keep from speaking. I must express my anguish. My bitter soul must complain. And this was a man who actively pursued God. And he just hit a point and said, God, I can't keep it in anymore. What's going on? I can't stop from complaining. And have you guys ever had a situation in your life where you say, God, uh, here it is. I just laid it all at your feet. I know I have. There's been times I've had to lay it all at God's feet. And Job did the same. Job 29.4 said, when I was in my prime, God's fellowship was felt in my home. And I, I, I want to leave that verse up there for a second. This verse, I was like, it made me sad. Because I know in my life, there have been times when I said, oh, I remember back in the good old days, I had that extra client back in the good old days. That was before I had bills when my parents paid for my car insurance. Back in the good old days, all this happened. And I want to challenge you, don't reflect back on the good old days in terms of something's lacking right now. That's going to really limit you and your spiritual growth. Because unfortunately, Job was saying, back in when I was in my prime or back in the good old days, God's friendship was felt in my home. But what Job didn't understand at that moment was God was still right there with him. He just didn't feel him. So no matter what stage of life you're in, avoid the tendency to say, back in the good old days, I remember I was able to lift my hands in worship, but focus on God right now. Please give me the strength to lift my hands and worship. So when Job is um, I'll say complaining to God, he's not showing weakness, but he's actually demonstrating faith, which is weird because some people may say, well, no, that's just, that's just showing weakness because you have to just lay it all out. But honestly, What's, what's weakness is keeping it in and not actually trusting anyone. What shows strength is if you need to get a counselor in your life. What shows strength is whenever you open up to a brother or a sister in Christ, say, I need some help on this journey. But see, Job was showing faith. He was demonstrating faith by telling God how he really feels. First of all, that shows that he has faith in God. He believes that there is a God. And second of all, he has enough faith in that moment to believe that God actually accepts him and loves him regardless. And I want to ask you today, do you have enough faith to sit down and say, God, this is how I feel, and I believe that you care enough about me to actually listen? And that's powerful. When you can wrap your mind around that concept saying that the God of all creation will set aside time to listen to you. Melissa, how are you feeling? I care. Carolyn, I care about you. And ever since I was a kid, my parents explained this to me. Well, they tried their best, I still don't understand. But that God can give you his undivided attention along with everyone else at the same time. Do you know that, Dominic? Whenever you say, God, this is how I feel, God's not saying, okay, cool, yeah, all right, yeah, I'm still, okay. You have God's undivided attention. But if you need God at the same time, you have his undivided attention. Does that, like, hurt your brain at all? Or do you see, like, smoke coming out of anyone's brains right now? I can't comprehend that. But whenever you come to the feet of the altar of Christ. He is willing to listen to you. Psalm 27, one says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And if you stand true on those promises, I guarantee you, God will listen to you and his hope and the confidence of Jesus Christ will override the fear in your life. So right now, Vision Church, I want you to hear from a sister in Christ that I have loved getting to know it is Miss Elsie Henderson. So let's go ahead and give it up for Miss Elsie as she comes on up to the stage. <laughs> Pastor Matt has been telling me uh, I'll say all the great things that God has been able to do through Elsie and her family. And whenever he was telling me, I said, oh my goodness, we need to get her up here. Good to see you, Elsie. 
And I just want you to share a couple of things this morning. First of all, tell me some about you, your family, your career. What are some things that you've seen God do? Let me see. Check one, two. There we go. Hey, blue mic. Is that is blue mic on? All right. There we go. <laughs> okay. She was, that was just a warm up, guys. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Not to say that I couldn't talk loud anyway, but nevertheless, um, it's so many things. I, 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 we, we've been a really blessed when we think about the love of God in our life. Um, he's allowed us to do the things that we want to do sometimes and sometimes things that we don't want to do, but things that he's given us the grace to do. Mm. So therefore, it's not always been easy, but it has been fulfilling because he's allowed us to do the things that honor him. So our life really has been sold out to him, even when we didn't get it right, even when we did it wrong. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So Elsie, when is the time that you have struggled to feel God's presence? Because well, first of all, how long have you been following God? How long have you been a Christian? Um, you can estimate. Let's say maybe... 40 years? Yeah. Yeah. And I would have to assume within those 40 years, there's probably been a time where you said, I don't feel God's presence. There has been a few times. A few times. Uh, yeah. More than a few, but I've said sure. a few. But I wanted to share a couple of things really yes. quickly with you. Number one is that my husband and I had three children that were in private Christian school. And at the time, um, that's really costly. And there was all of these things happening, all these things going on, and in the midst of things going on, I felt that there was something I was supposed to be doing, but I, I felt like I was going through this winter season, like, you know, in the winter when things are like uh, drying up, no leaves on the trees, that kind of thing, not knowing what he was tr saying to me, and I was talking to him, I heard nothing, and um, I just continued to spend time with him. And sometimes we have to continue to pursue him when we don't hear him because it's called faith. That allows us to be able to, because he woos us with his love. He's there, but sometimes he has to not be in our face sometimes so that we will be able to see how much he loves us. And we need to see how much we love him by pursuing him. Amen. So therefore, just continuing to pursue him in those times, it was not easy, but continue to pursue him. Absolutely. That's so good. And I know at least those times in my life, whenever, whenever I don't feel God, it's, not, it's usually not the most enjoyable. It's tough. But whenever I come out on the other side, I'm stronger. That's the thing. I know right the there. Father better. I say, wait, mm -hmm. I can now begin to hear God better. And it helps me appreciate those times when I do feel God's presence mm -hmm. because I can remember the times where I felt the absence of God's presence. You know, um, and so and, and even to that uh -huh. point, just yeah. like oh, you Oh, come said on, sister. That, you, can, you can preach. Okay. Let's go. You go. <laughs> and even to, I mean, that's, you're so on point. We do get closer to Christ. I mean, look, there was a time in my life where the Lord asked me to do something, and it was like a whole shift in everything that I had been doing. And in the process of that shift, I'm talking about shifting at a time when um, it, it included me going back to school. And, I'm, and at this point, I was over 50. Oh, wow. Going back to school. And I'm, 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 I'm saying in the process of it, it was so much warfare because there's a difference between being on an assignment or just doing something because you're doing it. When Come you're on. on an assignment, Come on. Then th in that process, then there will be a lot of warfare associated with it. That's and good. And so in that process, I was like, you know, the Lord had to put me to sleep. And in, the, and in, in my sleep, he told me what to do. He told me what it was going to look like, but I didn't know initially. I'm saying I'm walking by faith of the, in the beginning. And then at one point, he, he wanted me to do something else. Still attached with school, but he had another journey for me, and I didn't understand it. But he put me to sleep and told me what he wanted me to do. And in the process of him telling me, he, he also told me, I told him, Lord, I don't want to. I don't want to because this is too hard. It's too much warfare. I, I've been I, through too I much. love how honest you are. You're yes. just being honest. You no, just told no, God, I'm I don't want to. Yes. He already knows this anyway, right? Sure. Yeah, that's so, true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I didn't want to do point. it. Good point. I didn't want to yeah. do it because he knows you this. You just told him. Yeah. I, I told him in my <laughs> don't sleep. Don't you love her? <laughs> in my sleep, I told him yeah. I didn't want to do it. Uh -huh. I said, no, I don't want to do it. You saw this. You saw that. Yeah. You saw all of these things, and I didn't want to do it. But he told me he would be with me. And, he, and this is the thing. Once he told me he was going to be with me, and then when I woke up, 
Then I had to go on the journey. So in the journey, it wasn't like step-by-step -step instructions. He, he told me, and then I had to walk it out. So therefore, it wasn't step-by-step -step instructions. Mm. I had to walk out by faith what he told me. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And that actually ties into my third question. We're having church in here this morning. That ties to my third question. You, you answered some of it, but when has there been a specific time in your life, you, you could be as specific or vague as you'd like, where you had to just lay it all down at the cross? I'm telling you that this journey, and I'm on this journey now too, this journey of not listening to what I think or what my opinion is, honoring him beyond what I think, what I feel, what I think I know. Yeah. And I'm saying it's by faith every day, and it's laying it on the line and saying, God, it's this. Yes, yes. It's God, whatever you want me to do, however you want me to do it, whenever you want me to do it, I will do it. And I do always get it right? Heck no. <laughs> I don't always get it right. <laughs> but I'm telling yeah. you, I want to do his will. Come on. And so right now, in my life, right now, it's not yesterday, it's not last week, it's not last month, it's right now. That's I so am good. surrendered. I love it. I love it. And I don't know it all. And I don't, I don't even see it all. But I have faith and I'm laying it down. Lord, what you want me to do? How you want me to do it? That's, I'm living that right now. That's that good. was not before. Come on. That's good. That's good. Last question for you. And, and I want you to answer it, not to me, but to everyone here in person and online. But what would you encourage someone to do today if they don't feel God's presence? There, it's like this. Teach us. We have the ability to have a relationship or we can have religion. But you can't have both. So if we want a relationship with Christ, and that's for all of us. So you know when you point one finger, you got three more pointing back at yourself. It's either religion or relationship. So therefore, it is have a relationship with Christ. And that relationship will include hearing what he tells you to do. And even when you don't hear it, trusting that his plan for me is better than my plan for myself. Trusting that whatever he tells us to do, he has a plan that's so much more perfect than we could. We couldn't even make it up so good. His plan for us is so amazing. And if we knew the love that he has for us, I'm talking about the love all the way to the cross and beyond, and we understood that kind of love, my, my advice to anybody and even to myself uh -huh is to move in God's time and when he tells us to do something because it's, it may not feel good, but it is for our good. Come on. And so, and the other thing I would say to anybody and even to myself is to know that the creator has already created me and his creation, he has, he doesn't do anything for, for, for not. There's a purpose and a plan for everything God does. So know that his purpose and plan for all of us is greater than what we see or what we can understand or even what, what sometimes even what we think we know we can hear. So we got to be able to move whenever he say, whenever he says, how he says, and, and be able to be adaptable to his plan and purpose for our life. So I would say continue to move forward no matter how you feel because feelings change. Feelings change, but the fact that God loves us, that will never change. Amen. All right, guys, let's give it up for Miss Elsie. Yes. Amen. We had church this morning. We had church this morning. I love it. I love it. So just to recap, number one, purge sin in the camp. Number two is tell God how you feel. Point number three is focus on God's characteristics. This was the, honestly, I had most fun preparing for this point because I got to do some research about who is God. And not just like God is love, God is peace, but I want to know um, some, some more details. First of all, God is infinite. Colossians says that he is before all things. God has no beginning and no end. I have a beginning. I was born on October 10th, 2000. I don't know when my end is, but I have a beginning and I have an end. God does not. He's infinite. God is immutable. It means he's never changing. changing. Malachi 3.6, I, the Lord, do not change. Us as humans, we'll go through different seasons, we'll have different passions, we'll have different hobbies. God doesn't. He does not change. God is self-sufficient. John says, for the Father has life in himself. 
This is humbling, but we have nothing to bring God that he needs. We can bring things to God that he wants, like he wants our love, he wants our devotion, but he does not need anything because he is self-sufficient. God is omnipotent. It means he is all-powerful. There is nothing on earth, on heaven, in hell that is stronger than the power of God. He, is, he has all the power in his hand. God is omniscient. It means he's all-knowing. Isaiah tells us that his ways are higher than our ways. There is not something that we can think that God doesn't know. And I'll also touch on that for a second. Since God is all-knowing, God can never say, wow, I just thought of that. Because that would mean that prior to that statement, God was lacking that information. There is nothing that God ever learns because he knows everything. And whenever I get to learn those attributes about God, it gives me some more confidence about who I'm putting my faith and trust in. Lastly, God is omnipresent. It means he's everywhere. Jeremiah says that nobody can hide where God can't see them. So when I hear all those attributes of God, it gives me confidence saying that, Lord, even if I can't feel you, I know that you love me and you are worth following. I also want to touch on that circumstances can't change the character of God because God cannot change. Job said in Job 24, 12, says that I have not departed from his commands, but have reassured his words more than daily food. What does that mean? Make sure your relationship with God is not built on your emotions, but it's actually built on trusting who he is. Because he never changes. He loves you. He sent his son to die for you. And if you just base your relationship with God on how you feel in this moment, or if you just get those emotions during the worship song, and, ooh, I just probably lifted my hands. I feel God now. But if I don't like the worship set, then I don't feel God today. That's some people. Some people won't even come to church if they know we're not singing a song that they like. And if your emotions are based on how you feel or if it's a good week or if someone compliments my shoes, you're going to struggle. You're going to have a pretty hard life. But if you base your foundation on who God is, then you won't be shaken. Will you build your house on the rock or are you going to build your house on the sand? Building your house on the sand are the things of this earth. Like your houses, your cars, your job, your relationships here on earth. If you build it on that, those things can and will change. But if you build your life on the rock of Jesus Christ, you will stand firm and the gates of hell will not prevail. Number four is remember what God has already done. If you don't feel God's presence... Look back at his track record. He's never lost. He has never let someone down. Because in Job's story, even though he lost everything, God restored it all, and he got repaid, and he actually got back more than he lost. God never lets someone lose. Challenge me with it. Find the time in Scripture when God has let someone down. You can't find it. And I'm going to look back at God's track record in his history and say, Lord, if you've never lost, you have no beginning, you have no end, I'm going to remember what you've already done and just believe that this is not the end for me. This isn't the end of my story. I want you to want to read about two paragraphs from Purpose Driven Life, page 114, day 14. You guys will read this next week. If you've already read this, you're a nerd and a tryhard because you've already read a couple days ahead. Just messing with you. Love you guys. Familiar, if, whenever you become familiar with something, you become complacent. And we have heard the story of how, yep, Jesus died for our sins. He rose again, and we have new life. We preach it here all the time at church, and I'll be the first to admit that I become complacent with that miracle. I heard a pastor one time say that someone came and asked me, what's the greatest miracle that you've ever seen? Either at your church or in the Bible. He said, of course, that's easy. It's salvation. Salvation's always the greatest miracle. And that struck me because I became complacent with that. And I want to read this beautiful one or two paragraph section by Dr. Warren about the crucifixion. Because I know I've came complacent with that. And in this season of Lent, we're focusing on how Jesus came to this earth. 
to die for me without the guarantee of me even choosing him. And God would have came for Melissa knowing that if she was the only one who would ever accept him. God would come for Jacoby and send Jesus for Jacoby even if he knew no one else would accept his son but you for the chance of you accepting him. And he would still go through this. Even before his crucifixion, the Son of God was stripped naked, beaten until almost unrecognizable, whipped, scorned, and mocked, crowned with thorns, and spit on contemptuously. Abused and ridiculed by heartless men, he was treated worse than an animal. Then, nearly unconscious from, from blood loss, he was forced to drag a cumbersome cross up a hill, was nailed to it, and was left to die the slow, excruciating torture of death by crucifixion. While his lifeblood drained out, Heckler stood by and shouted insults, making fun of his pain and challenging his claim to be God. Next, as Jesus took all of mankind's sin and guilt on himself, God looked away from that ugly sight and Jesus cried out in total desperation, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus could have saved himself, but then he could not have saved you. Words cannot describe the darkness of that moment. Why did God allow and endure such ghastly, evil mistreatment? Why? So you could be spared from eternity in hell, and so you could share in his glory forever. The Bible says Christ was without sin, but for our sake, God made him share our sin in order that in union with him, we might share the righteousness of God. Almost done. Jesus gave up everything so you could have everything, He died so you could live forever, and that alone is worthy of your continual thanks and praise. So never again should you wonder what you have to be thankful for. It's not beautiful. So I encourage you today, if you don't feel the presence of God in your life, and if God feels distant, I want you to at least know everything I read, he did that for you. If you're watching online, he did that for you. God would not go through all that and send his one and only son to do that and leave you hanging right now. You're not stuck in a valley. You may be going through it, but you're not stuck there. And also, I want to let you know right now, if you don't know anything what I'm talking about with the presence of God, what's that? I've never felt the presence of God. You can make a choice today to say, God, I believe in you. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died and you rose again and that in you, I can have eternal life. And if you make that choice today, your name is added to what's called the Lamb's Book of Life, and you will be saved. So I want to encourage you right now, if you want to make a decision for Jesus Christ, we're going to pray a prayer as a church family. For those of us who are Christians, I want you to pray it with me out loud. And whenever I say amen, I want all of our eyes to be closed, and I'm going to ask you to raise your hand in the air if you accepted Christ today. I challenge you to be bold. If Jesus did this for you and you want that gift of eternal life, it's yours today. It's free. There's nothing you could do to earn it. There's nothing you could do to pay for it, to do enough good works. But the only way to get it is by accepting God into your heart. So I want us to pray as a church family, all eyes closed. Dear God, I believe you're the son of God. I believe that you died. And I believe that you rose again. I repent of my sins and I put my trust in you. Today I dedicate my life to you. I will be changed. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, all eyes closed. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, I want you to lift your hands on the count of three. One, two, three. Anyone in this room, praise God, praise God. Amen, 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 praise God. You're a part of the family of God. I see hands across the room. If you're online, comment down below. Our team will reach out to you. Your name has been added to the Lamb's Book of Life. Let's lift up a shout of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. So we're going to have a worship song, and after this time, Pastor Matt's going to come on up and lead us in a prayer that if you're in a valley and don't feel God's presence. I know for me, I've been following Christ for over 10 years, and honestly, today was not my day to pray to accept Christ. 
But today may be my day to say, God, I don't feel your presence. What am I trying to say? No matter how long you've been saved, if you need help and you need prayer today, we're going to have a time of worship and a time of praying and healing for our church. Before we do that, I want to share four next steps. Real, real tangible. I'll be real quick. And worship team, you guys can go and come on up. Step number one is to purge sin in your life and get accountability. Again, this is the one that's not the most fun. Maybe some accountability. You need to get a covenant eyes porn blocker for your phone so you can devote your life to a life of sexual purity and integrity. Maybe a next step in your life is you need to move out of the house with your boyfriend or girlfriend. Maybe a next step in your life is you need to start treating waitresses good on Sundays and not just treating them like trash because you may make more than them and because you're hungry. Maybe your next step is you need to work on your temper and get some friends in your life to have some accountability so whenever you're struggling with anger or temptation, you can have people to help you in that moment. The second next step, get some community in your life to help you whenever you're hurting. The best way to do this, or at least the best way to start, is get involved in a small group here at Vision Church. This past week, we had six of them. We had some online. We had some in person. It was incredible for men, women, couples. Uh, I guess online, that's the like other category. You could, you could watch that from at home if you're lazy, if you're, if you're in jail. Anyone, anyone can watch the online small group. I lead it. You're more welcome to join. Number three, next step, spend time in God's word. That's a real easy next step to feel God's presence is dedicate time to set aside things in your schedule. Say, Lord, I'm going to open this up for 10 minutes and spend time with you. Talking to God in your car is great. It's fine. But if you really want to grow, that's not going to cut it. You're going to have to set time aside to spend time with the Father. And number four is to lead with gratitude. If God never did another thing for you, you would always have a reason to praise him. Lead with gratitude in your life. Don't walk around complaining, but walk around saying, God, thank you for what you do on the cross. Thank you for what you're doing in my life. And real quick, we're going to start. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you, God. So, dear God, right now, I pray that, Lord, that the, that the words I've spoken today, God, will just marinate in the hearts of the listeners today, God. So that the words of Elsie, the words of our worship team, God, will just soak in. And that, God, everything spoken today will be for the purpose of us becoming more like you, God. In this time of worship, I pray, God, that even if we don't have enough strength to lift up our hands, God, that we take on your yoke to give us strength in this season, God. God, I thank you for the new believers at Vision today, God, those three people who gave their life to the Lord. God, I thank you for people who are growing in their walk with Christ and all of our online virtual visionaries, God. We want to continue feeling your presence right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, let's gonna stand up to your feet. We're gonna continue to worship today. We hope that you enjoyed this week's message. If you just made a decision to accept Jesus, then congratulations. We would love to celebrate with you. Visit viz.church slash salvation, and we look forward to meeting you along with mailing you a free gift. We would love to have you join us for church in person or on the Vision Network this Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Head on over to viz.church slash RSVP to let us know you're coming. As always, we are here for you, and please contact our team if we can pray for you in any way. Thanks again for joining us, and God bless.